All right, we'll continue with uh, our development of uh, basis functions in multiple dimensions. What we did in the previous segment was to uh, observe that the Stenzer product uh, idea allows us to very conveniently construct uh, the higher order the functions in, in higher dimensions using the functions in 1D. Okay, uh, in order to continue and, and uh, provide us with uh, ourselves with everything we need to complete formulations in two and three dimensions, um, there is one thing we haven't yet done, even for our 3D formulation of the linear elliptic uh, PDE for the scalar variable. And that thing is integration, right? We haven't talked about how we do numerical integration in multiple dimensions, right? That's what we will aim to do in this segment. So the topic of this segment is uh, numerical integration in, again, one through three dimensions. Let me write out the word. The approach we will use is uh, conceptually uh, similar to what we did in the previous segment, right? This idea of uh, forming these tensor product uh, formulas. Okay? And to start out, let's go back to 1D. Okay, in 1D, the sort of situation we are confronted with is the following. We need to integrate um, from minus 1 to 1 uh, some function, say g of c1 dc1. Okay, every single integral that we need to evaluate in our finite element formulation reduces to this. Okay, and of course, this is the form that's applicable to every component of, of a matrix, whether it's our stiffness matrix or conductivity matrix or, or our forcing function and so on. Okay? And you recall how we did this in 1D, right? How did we go about doing numerical integration in 1D? Remember? Yes, we did it with numerical quadrature, right? Which basically says that, okay, let me just uh, do a sum instead of this integral. Okay, I'm going to do a sum with L going from 1 to number of integration points. Okay, I am going to evaluate G C 1, okay, at all these different values of uh, L. All right, and um, once I do that, I am going to multiply each of those function evaluations with uh, a weight WL, okay? So what we have here are quadrature points, PTS short for point, and that is a weight. Okay, that's the general approach for numerical quadrature. Of course, we use Gaussian quadrature. Okay, and Gaussian quadrature said that, well, if you choose to do it with a single integration point, okay, you would pick CL equals 0 and WL equals um, 2, right? Okay, and the reason for that weight of WL equals 2 is something that we understood from how we would integrate constants, all right? Uh, and, and this went on, right? So, for instance, if you went as far as N int equals 3, 
what we would see, uh, what we would observe is that we would get, um, um, sorry, I should pay attention to my um, notation here. This would be C1 L, right? Okay. So if we were doing an n equals 3, then C1 1 L equals 1 would be uh, minus square root of 3 over 5 W1 would be um, 5 over 9 C1 2 would by symmetry be the point 0 W2 would be 8 over 9 and C1 3 would be the point uh, root 3 over 5. And the weight, you may remember or you may figure it out from symmetry, would again be 5 over 9. Okay, and we saw that, um, you know, Gaussian quadrature said that um, a rule of um, that an nint rule right or n int point rule integrates a polynomial of order 2 n int minus 1 exactly. Okay, so we recall all this. What we're going to see is that when we go to multiple dimensions, it is essentially a tensor product idea, right? And, or a tensor product rule that holds on this uh, basic idea. All right, so let's go ahead and see how that works out. Okay, all right. So in uh, 2D, In 2D, as you may imagine, you need to integrate terms of the following type. Need to integrate, okay? Minus 1 to 1, minus 1 to 1, G, generally a function of C1 and C2, D C1, D C2, okay? And these limits, let's say that is for C2 and this is for C1, all right? It's really very straightforward. Let's suppose we first do the integral over C1, okay? And we're going to do numerical quadrature, okay? So. Right, so I have numerical integration or quadrature, right? So what numerical integration says is that, well, I can just break this up, right? I can write this as an integral C2 equals minus 1 to 1. And now for the inner integral, right, uh, over C1, I will first use quadrature, okay? So what this says is that I'm now going to talk of doing a sum, let's say L1 equals 1 to number of integration points along that dimension, okay? Um, all right, so we have uh, L1 going from 1 to number of integration points. We have G, C1, L1, right? You pick quadrature points only in the, along the C1 coordinate. And you leave the C2 as the continuous coordinate, right? So um, you, you retain, therefore, the elemental D C2, okay? Um, actually, let me write that a little later. We're first doing the integration with respect to C1, right? So then we just multiply this by WL1, okay? So what I have here in parentheses is the result of having integrated over C1, right? Yeah, we did numerical integration over C1, but nevertheless, there we have it, okay? D C2, 
right? And then we come back and do the same thing over C2, all right? So numerical integration would give us this, and then as another step, we would get um, now sum L2 equals 1 to n int, um, sum L1 equals 1 to n int, G C L1, sorry, C1 L1, C2 L2, W L1, W L2, and we're done, okay? Now, of course, this is uh, based on an assumption of symmetry in C1 and C2, right? Symmetry in the sense that we're uh, considering the case where we have a polynomial of uh, perhaps the same order in C1 and C2, right? That's why we've chosen the same number of integration points along the two directions, okay? Of course, this does not have to be the case, right? We are always free to choose different number of integration points in the different directions, right? If we know something about our polynomial, right? So I'm going to make this more particular by changing this to n1 int, right? And this to n2 int, right? It just says that we can use different number of integration points in the different directions, right? So the remark here. Use different number of integration points along C1 and C2, right? If we know something about the polynomials that we are working with, okay? And of course, we would be we could uh, use Gaussian quadrature in each direction, right? And everything would work out. Uh, the, the the integration points along C1 and uh, C2 would be the same as the Gaussian uh, quadrature points, and so would the weights, right? All right. Okay, and here, what you will see here, of course, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to write it down. It's something that you can conclude easily by going back and looking at the formulas. Uh, what you will see is that um, in in the two D case, the weights add up to what? Consider what would happen if you had to integrate a constant. Okay. So what happens here is that I'll just write it out as a sentence here sum of weights equals 4, okay? And this comes simply because we're integrating over a bi-unit domain, right? And the area of the bi-unit square in 2D is, of course, 4, okay? So that's where it comes from. All right, now we can extend this to 3D, right? And this would be completely clear how to do it in 3D, right? Uh, in 3D, we are trying to integrate uh, something of this form, right? We are trying to integrate uh, C3 equals uh, minus 1 to 1, C2 equals minus 1 to 1, C1 equals minus 1 to 1, G of C1, C2, C3. Um, dxc1, dxc2, dxc3, all right? I'm straight away going to just write out the formula, 
a numerical quadrature formula is uh, sum L3 equals 1 to n 3 int, right, number of integration points in that C3 direction, L2 equals 1 to number of integration points in the C2 direction, L1 equals 1 to number of integration points in the C1 direction, G C1 L1 C2 L2, oh, sorry. C2 L2, C3 L3, right, times W L1, W L2, W L3, okay? And again, we could be using Gaussian uh, quadrature points and uh, weights, where the points are again simply determined as the uh, the points as chosen in the 1D case, all right? So this is how we would construct our, we would, we would actually evaluate all our, our integrals. All right, so so this is for the, the, the general case, uh, so, sorry, not the general case, but the case where we are looking at either um, a bi-unit domain in 1D, uh, 2D, or in 3D, okay? And that bi-unitness is reflected in the limits on these integrals. All right. We'll end this segment here. Uh, when we come back, we will look at a um, different type of basis function.